We are tonight's entertainment. What the fuck is this, Chet? Mm-hmm. This is a tasty burger. Were you rushing or were you dragging? You like Huey Lewis in the news? Is this your homework, Larry? Welcome back to the Spooky the Scoop. Boom Scoop. The Spooky Scoop. The hash slinging. The, the trash ringing. The the the, the stash, stash slinging. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the third one. <laughs> but we're back. Yep. We're here for Spooky Season. All month long, we're coming at you. I'm I'm super excited. I've been having a great time. Yeah. <clears throat> All month long, all October, all spooky season, we're coming with the fucking steamers. Yeah. Don't uh, don't listen to this one with the lights off. I'll tell oh, you no. that. No, no, no. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna have some restless nights oh, if, yeah. if you're listening to this at at nighttime in the dark. Oh, dude. Listen. We'll be don't do that to yourself. Coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee I got someone with. Yeah, that. you got someone. Just now. Someone just shit their pants. Um. Yeah, we're back. Uh, this week we're talking about our top five, top ten most underrated horror films. I was glad you caught yourself because I was having a really hard fucking time coming up it's, with ten. It's not a huge deal. Uh, it is. I've got a, a love-hate relationship with horror movies. It's better when you don't have to rank them. Yeah. When you can just make a list. Yeah. That's better. Um, but yeah, we've got ten underrated horror films. We'll talk about what we've been watching. Uh, but first we've got our song game. Song game. I have two because I'm afraid they're both easy. Okay. So you can go ahead with yours. Mine's mine's pretty easy. All right. Uh, mute mayhem. <laughs> yep. All right. Here's mine. Shrek. Shrek 2. Yep. Yep. Here's the other one. That was a Shrek 2. That was Shrek 1. Oh, I Shrek apologize. One. Yep. Yeah. That's the potion escape. Can't we scene. just settle this over a pint? Drive. Yep. Yep. That didn't take long. That was my fear. <laughs> it'd be too easy. But... I had an easy one too, so. We both All right, I'll, I'll do a third. Ooh, a third? Just one? on the spot. Just oh. just to see All right. Mike's on you, what dude. you're thinking. creator yep hell yeah i still am like i i didn't realize that was a real song i thought they made that like really cool sounding song for the creator no that would have been cool would have been it fits it so well but knowing it's han zimmer you should have known that 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 wouldn't have happened like i could see that being a score if it was ludwig because he's more he's uh you know more youthful and more in touch with like instruments and technology, Hans know, pretty traditional with like using horns and strings, and that's pretty much it. He is. And but there's also nothing that he can't do, and no one he can't do. You're right about that, pal. <laughs> no one's arguing there. Um, but yeah, I think we can just go ahead and get into our watch list. It's a pretty stacked watch list. Pretty stacked. Up watch until list the very end right. of the week, we kind of we kind of dropped the ball. Uh, I watched a horror movie. Every day except one day. It's so far in October. Okay. Only day I didn't watch one was October 5th. Uh, and that was the day I, uh, my mom got surgery and I had to like drive her there and fucking take care yeah. of her and, you know, be a good son. So yeah. that's the only reason spooky good didn't laugh. happen that day. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify. It's not because I was blacking. Yeah. It's because I got home at like eight, went straight to the gym. I was like 10. And go night night yeah that's Sleepy time. it happens yeah. um but yeah so <clears throat> did we talk we didn't talk about saw x did we no we did not okay um yeah we were we recorded the last episode right before we saw saw x yeah okay so that was our first watch uh saw x is pretty fucking good it's fucking sick dude um the trailer reveals everything to you but it I'm was... glad I didn't watch the trailer because yeah. if it did play I wasn't paying attention 
because I really didn't know the story to Saw X at all. I went in pretty blind. And to me, it's easily the best other than the original. Yeah. I know some people have a fondness for Saw 2 and like possibly Saw 3, but I don't remember much of Saw 2. I'm, I'm sure it's pretty solid, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that Saw X is my favorite other than the original, yeah, even if I, I rewatched Saw 2. I haven't uh, gone back to rewatch any of the Saws, really, except for the first one. I've never been a massive fan of the Saw movies. Yeah, when I watched them the first time, it felt like an obligation. <clears throat> it felt yeah. like I was I was doing a chore by binging Saw movies. Yeah. So it's not really something I want to do again. Um, but yeah, what Saw X does, different from the other movies, is there's a lot of setup. And the people you get to know the people in the traps before they're in the traps and you get yeah. to understand why they're there and what they did wrong instead of the movie starts and someone's in a trap and then you get flashbacks of like that you did this and that's why yeah. you're in this trap you actually hate the people yeah. that are in the traps that's you actually, it's too. like it it turns it to where it's less like oh i hope this person can get out of this trap like in the other movies and it's more like fuck you fucking yeah. saw off your leg bitch <laughs> yeah. that's that's more what this movie is like and yeah. that's a that's something i didn't expect but it's kind of something that seems a little like how have they not done that until now yeah it's also uh another thing too because they all actually deserve to be in traps <laughs> yeah they're, <laughs> they're horrible all people bad people yeah um and some of the saw movies like he definitely had some some scallywags, if you will. Some he had some rascals, yeah, for but sure. Not enough to like gouge out your fucking yeah. eyeballs. He had some guys who were being real jerks. Yeah, but um, I think it's funny how Couple how much heads. of the saw traps like vary in difficulty because in Saw X, I don't want to spoil Saw X by the way because it's new, so people might not have seen it yet. But there's a trap, like you can see it in the trailer, but there's like a trap a bone marrow trap we'll just i'll just kind of leave it at that if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about that trap's impossible to survive yeah There's no one can, no human can survive that trap no matter what route you go but uh and then there's a brain surgery trap which also yeah. just isn't possible um <clears throat> but in saw one amanda's trap is that she wakes up with a, a reverse bear trap on her head and the key is inside of a dead guy and she just has to open up the dead guy's stomach and get the key yeah and th that's chump change first of all and uh, <laughs> i brought this up to my friends and they were like well actually uh she thought he was dead at first but then right when she started touching him he woke up and then she had to make the decision to kill him and i, I was still like, don't really i was care. like even uh, first of all i don't think she knew he was alive i th i think she didn't notice that he like woke up a little bit, but either way, even if she had to kill a guy, you're telling me that I can get out of my saw trap by just killing another person. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm. That sounds. You're dead. That sounds crazy, but there's there's several traps in Saw X that I would just be like, yeah, go ahead and kill me. Yeah. Yeah. If it's if it's do this or cut my head off, cut my fucking head off, dude. Yeah. End it now. Yeah. So, I'm not going to play this fucking so she, game. Amanda is notorious as like the only person that survived Jigsaw's traps. Yeah, because her well, trap yeah, fucking, was of eat course, a slice of cake. Because her, her trap was nap. just kill this idiot. <laughs> yeah. get, the, get the key out of this idiot's stomach. Yeah, dude. It's like, yeah, no fucking shit. Who, who wouldn't legend. be able to beat that trap? And then there's this other, in the same movie, it's, it's not like the traps got worse and harder as the movies went on. In the same first movie, there's a guy who gets stuck in this room with numbers coded on the wall. Like the entire room is covered in numbers. He's he's covered in wax. He's covered in um in like flammable uh like substance and he's he has to hold a candle and go back and forth. Oh, there's glass on the ground. He's he's naked. He he's, he's he has bare feet hard, walking on glass and having to there's a safe in the middle and he has to walk back and forth between the wall and the safe to try all these different codes. First of all, you can never, you're never going to get the right code. There's the combination of numbers on the wall is hundreds of thousands of combinations of numbers. You're never going to yeah. get it. And 
even if you could get it, you're going to catch on fire because of the candle. So the guy burned to death. And that was in the same movie as, yeah, there's a there's a key in this dead guy's stomach. Get it. Yeah. That's crazy town. So, yeah, I just thought it was funny that in Saw X, like, none of the traps are survivable except for one. But we'll just, I'll just, I'll just say that. But yeah. Yeah. There, there really survivable. is only one. And that one. Even then, like. When you encounter that one, it's pretty disappointing. That's kind of when the movie, it's like, what the fuck? I don't know if we're talking about the same one. You talking about the last one? I'm talking about the last one. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about that. Oh. I still don't think the one you're even talking about is. I'm talking question. about Gabriella. Yeah. I'm not even talking about that, that one. Even if you survive at the time, you're dead because of the effects that that thing has on you yeah like within a certain amount of time you'll be dead so anyways uh yeah i just thought it was funny that the traps that they do now are like you can't you can't survive them yeah. like you just can't yeah. um they'll be like and then oh, the the guy with cut the... your heart out and stand there for 15 minutes yeah like, you can be put dead. it back in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i can only do that for fucking no time because yeah. it's my heart <laughs> You fucking kill me, shoot me in the head. For this trap, all you gotta do is cut off your head. Once your head's cut off, you win. Yeah, I'll, I'll help you out. Then I'll open the door. <laughs> and if you don't, I'm gonna shoot you. Fucking Here's shoot me, dude. How you escape this trap is you cut off your arms and you cut off your legs. And then you stitch your legs where your arms used to be. And then you stitch your legs where your arms used to be. You stitch your arms where your legs used to be, and then I'll let you out. <laughs> and then you're good. <laughs> yeah. And then we're boys again. Yeah. Um, and then, like, you got to kill me in some excruciating way to, like, motivate me to do that. But he's just like, oh, I'll just cut your head off. Like, <laughs> yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an easy fucking deal to me. Uh, so, yeah, I gave, I gave Saw X a three and a half. I thought that the way they did it, where they built up to it and... uh made you really hate the people in the traps made john kramer not feel like a psycho for once yeah like the, he like i'm sure this is debatable but in my opinion john kramer isn't like an evil guy no i don't think that's what his character is supposed to be and you can see how he treats normal people <clears throat> that he's not evil like the way he treats kids and anyone who's not a fucked up piece of shit he's he's a sweet guy yeah, and it's his... just he has a really demented way of of trying to show people what they're doing wrong. Yeah. His ideology and and what he's like preaching makes sense. Yeah, he's he's he has the same ideology as the Riddler in the Batman, where he's like just telling people isn't good enough. You have to show them. You have to give yeah. them an example. And uh, so I think that's interesting, making John Kramer sort of the hero of the movie and yeah. like the character you're rooting for yeah uh so yeah i really liked it shout out to saw x hell yeah um fuck henry by the way uh yeah henry henry's a bitch all right henry blows ass <laughs> yeah fuck henry all the homies hate henry yeah um after that i watched let the right one in this i didn't was... accompany you with that i've seen you did not i've seen uh let the right one in have you i have yeah i thought you not let me in I, i'd seen both oh before we watched let me in and let me in was very similar to how i remembered it so i didn't rewatch let the right one in but i'm excited to hear what you think because a lot of people really don't like let me in but they really love let the right one in here's my thing i watched let me in first and the movies are pretty much identical it's a remake let me in as a remake and honestly the only difference is the performances i think the performances in the original are better and that's like the only difference you can even make so i feel like it took away from my experience knowing this is about to happen and then this is about to happen and i feel like if you showed just no one no one knows the story to this at all and you just show them let the right one in they're probably going to be blown away but since I'd already seen Let Me In, it's kind of like when you watched Old Boy after seeing the Old Boy remake, but not as bad because these are both still really good. Yeah. But I do remember there being more 
of the lore that was explored and let the right one in behind um I, I don't want to spoil anything but behind what was going on i don't remember any differences we'll talk about it afterwards but i did see a guy with like a full video essay of like why let me in was garbage and why let the right one in was like way better and like See, I, he had a list of things that they did differently and let oh, me in but i remember it, them i remember them being pretty similar too like yeah. and then there's just a little bit more information that's like hinted at and let the right one in yeah it i don't really have too much to say about it because i, if, I feel like i watched a movie i'd already seen so mm-hmm. um i mean i enjoy it i like that setting that snowy I think it's. I think this one's Swedish. Um, uh, yeah, I think you're right. But like the 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 set and everything, the cinematography, really like it. Um, and I think the performances are better. But honestly, other than that, I don't, I don't really see many differences. So yeah, I, en- I enjoyed it. I gave it a four star. I I have, let the right one in and let me in as the same rating. So. Okay. All right. uh, it's probably just because of the order. I, if I would have watched this one first and then watched Let Me In, I probably would like this one more. But mm-hmm. just yeah, yeah. I'm I'm more. glad you didn't like see anything like major glaring as far as like this one's like way better. No, I'm not they're, really they're too so identical. Yeah, I'm not super big on either one of them to be honest with you. I like it. I like them both. Like they're good. I don't think I'd give them four. So mm. I'd probably go like a three and a half. Mm. All right. Um, and then after that same day, we watched Pet Cemetery. We did the original from '89. Pass cow. <laughs> Sorry, about I, that. <laughs> um, I wasn't huge on it, dude. That movie scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I watched it as a, a pretty youngin, mm-hmm. and it definitely didn't age well. I didn't uh, didn't like it too much upon rewatch. My mom used to tell me it was the scariest movie ever made. Yeah. Uh, it's not. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. It's not. It's If you watch it today and you've never... Maybe if you grew up with it and you're thinking about how you felt when you were a kid watching it, maybe it'll scare you. But if you watch it for the first time, it's not a scary movie at all, in my opinion. I think the, the scariest thing about it is probably Zelda. But... Even then, it's like, it's kind of goofy. Yeah. So, I just thought the movie, the movie overall, though, outside of how scary it is, I just thought, like, the performances were off. It didn't feel like a real family. It felt like a movie. It felt like people acting. Um, and Stephen King, I, I think, agrees, and I think he actually hated the lead performances in the movie. I think he so. hates almost all of his movie adaptations except for it. Uh, like the old it and he the likes remake. Shawshank Redemption. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm sure you like uh, Green Mile too. I don't yeah. know how he felt about Cujo. Um, fucking yeah, I don't like the performances very much. Uh, I and I just kind of thought that it was boring, so I gave it a three. That's about where it is, yeah. yeah. It's just very like it, dated. It's, fi- it's fine. I can't really tell. Like, I think the performances is the one thing that you can probably pick out and be like, that's not good. But the effects and stuff and everything else, it just, it's just very dated as well. Um, the performances outside of Fred Gwynn. That guy's a stud. Yeah. yeah. He was Fred Gwynn nah, is the man. Rob. Yeah, he sounded like Forrest Gump. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he felt like the only natural person there. I don't want to take that trail. Yeah. <laughs> that trail's bad news. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so of a man's soul. Estonia. <laughs> I want salt ruby. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, he sounded like that big foot from <laughs> Curse the Cowardly Dog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's fine. Like, it, it's okay. I, I wouldn't want to watch it again. Um, and then we watched Possessor. A lot done we haven't with talked possessor. about possessor yet. Yeah, did we you? We have uh, very, very brief thoughts. I said I thought it was cool, or I was like it was good, and then you were like, "Yeah, I thought so too." And then we went to bed. I, I beg to differ, sir. Oh, I said that was awesome, and you went, "Yeah, it was good," and I went, "That's very different than awesome," and you were like, 
huh, I don't know. And then you walked away. <laughs> oh. Well, what'd you think? I thought it was really fucking good. I really liked it. I thought it was... Visually, it was really cool. Like, the effects that they did of what was going on. Try not to spoil anything for Possessor, but I think the concept of it was awesome. I thought that the visuals and how they portrayed what was happening was really unique and interesting. And overall, I really liked it. Yeah. I didn't know the synopsis before I watched it. I just knew it was Brandon Cronenberg, and it was a raffle pick, so I was like assigned it basically so i had to watch it you know so i didn't have a decision to make like yeah i just gotta, i just put it on because i got recommended it um but the synopsis is there's a special agent and it's set like in the future i assume because they have this technology that we don't have uh there's a special agent that uses brain implants to take over and possess people's bodies so they can uh, execute high profile uh, targets. Yeah, as a different person. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like cloning or anything. It's like they become a like if if somebody wanted to kill like Donald Trump theoretically, this person would get a brain implant and like take over Donald Trump's right hand man's brain. Yeah. Or so his then wife or something. Yeah, or his wife or his son <clears throat> or something and go kill him. So then they don't have any blood on their hands, like the CIA or whoever it is. And that person whose body they were in just gets blamed. Like, oh, yeah. this person killed. Yeah. So the concept is really cool. And what they do with it is really cool. Mm-hmm. And like you said, the visuals, there's a lot of like really eerie, like montage stuff. Yeah. Um, Even them using that, like uh, they had a name for it, that toner, whatever it is. They called it something. But the they- toner. They like used it to dial in their like connection. Oh, uh, that anytime they did that, that was really cool. Yeah, they were looking in the mirror and yeah. like doing a range of emotions. It was like the baseline test and Blade yeah, Runner. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I gave it a three and a half. Um, it wasn't something that I watched and I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, I guess I just thought it was like a tiny bit slow. I could have appreciate it being like a little more fast paced mm-hmm. i thought that the character that uh is being taken over like kind of kind of got more screen time than he needed at times but yeah i i really enjoyed it um yeah i don't think if we ever watch infinity pool i don't think i'm gonna like it as much as possessor i've got a sneaky suspension that you're right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh so yeah, uh, that was cool. Yeah, Possessor was just cool, very fucking unique. violent, super violent. The uh, um, fire stoke scene. Yeah. Uh, if you know, you know. But holy fucking shit, <laughs> that was intense. That was nuts. Guy from uh, Count of Three. Yep. Shout out to shout out to dude. Him. Yep. Um, next day we watched The Strangers. Yeah, we did. And my thoughts remain kind of the same. Um, I think it's good. I I think what's interesting about The Strangers is that this is kind of a spoiler. Kind of not. So if you don't want to know anything about The Strangers, skip ahead a little bit. But the bad guys in The Strangers don't have a motive. They don't. It's not some revenge thing or like, you fucked my wife and now I'm here to murder your family. <laughs> yeah. It's like, these are just people that go to houses in the middle of the night and terrorize people. Yeah. And that's it. And these, these two, this couple just got unlucky. And it's, and to me, that's creepy because home invasions are, in real life, are just people getting unlucky. Most, 99% of break-ins and home invasions aren't personal they aren't like oh i know this guy and he's a piece of shit so i'm gonna rob him it's yeah. normally just wrong place wrong time someone broke into your house and you got unlucky and so the fact that there's never a mo- you never see their faces there's never a motive revealed or anything at the end of the movie the main character says why are you doing this to us and one of the strangers says because you were home mm-hmm. 
And that's just creepy. That's just creepy to me. So the, the idea and the concept is creepier than the actual execution. Because it's an hour and a half. And it's it gets pr- sort of repetitive. Um, the strangers, they toy with them. So, like, they'll they'll break into the house. They'll show up in a corner and the person will run away. And then... And then 10 more minutes goes by and then it happens again. And it's sort of like in The Nun, how The Nun will show... In the first movie, like from 2018, she'll show up and scare someone, but not like try to kill them or anything. Yeah. She'll just scare them, they'll run away, and then they'll reset for 10 minutes so they can do it again. And it doesn't feel like there's like a sense of urgency of like, this person's trying to kill me. Yeah. Um, So they're not... The strangers don't try to kill them like like as soon as possible. They're fucking with them, and it, it just runs on a little long, and um, I don't know. The characters aren't the smartest. Like, the, the main, the good characters, the protagonists, they're not the smartest characters, so it can be a little frustrating. But I think they do a really cool thing with the handheld camera work yeah, and the um, the lighting and everything. It has a very gritty feel to it. And the thing they did with the record player, I really liked. Yeah, that was cool. uh, She was playing a record player earlier in the movie, and then once this weird shit starts happening, the like she's getting chased, and the record player starts uh, fucking up and like repeating, and it's like this really creepy part of the song. But it's not really creepy. It's just creepy because it keeps repeating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like that. I thought yeah. that was cool. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not big on the strangers, and I rewatched it. Still not big on the strangers. I think I'd give it like a two and a half. Mm. Pretty like average movie. Um, the twist of them not really having a motive is interesting. It just didn't really work for me. And then the main lady. If you think of the worst thing you could possibly do in a bad situation, she does it. I promise yeah. you she does it. Yeah. I think it I think I don't love it either. I gave it a three. Um but I think it's creepy to think about the same way that Blair Witch Project is because in the Blair Witch Project, you never really see the Blair Witch. Yeah. It's all in your head. You're imagining what the Blair Witch looks like. So your imagination can just run wild and you never see who the strangers are. They're just people with masks on and you don't know their motive. So it can kind of just make you wonder like that in mm-hmm. a similar way. And I think that's always going to stick with you longer sort of than a bad guy or a monster or something that is in lighting, like in overexposed lighting and you can see, and there's no mystery around them anymore. And, um, like so that's kind of something the boogeyman fucked up. Uh, cause there were some scenes where he was, the boogeyman was really creepy and like the new movie from this year. And yeah. then there were some scenes where they overlit it and ruined the, mystery around it yeah it's really hard to walk that tightrope line yeah and that happens in a lot of movies what not to show yeah yeah so um yeah strangers is fine um not one of my favorites yeah okay i appreciate it yeah um next day i watched it well we all watched it but y'all went to bed because you couldn't hang with the big dogs i did i dozed off dozed off well you didn't just doze off you went to bed you left you left the room and went to bed. Yeah, I dozed off and then I got up and, and fucking. But dozing off isn't the same thing as going to bed. I did both those things. Yep. Yep, okay. you sure did because you couldn't hang with the big dogs. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, on the other hand, I fucking love. The It remake is really good. I love it. Um, I actually at one point had a poster of it in my room. It was when I first got into movies. and I don't think I remember that poster. Yeah. It was at my mom's house in my movie room. or my ga- I think at the time I called it my game room because I was a big gamer. More like a movie closet. Yeah. Um, but I had an It poster, and that's just a movie that ever since I saw it in theaters, like just the first time I saw it, I fucking loved it. Because it's... I mean, it, it's creepy, like... If you watch a lot of horror movies, it's not going to keep you up at night. But I could also see someone who doesn't watch horror movies watching it and thinking it's pretty creepy. Yeah. Um, 
the performances are all great. Yeah, Bill Skarsgård is Pennywise kids, is yeah. amazing. Um, I love the kids, the whole cast for the kids, and it had the kids give it give the movie like a eighties Stand by Me Sandlot type of feel. Yeah, which is a thing that horror movies like never have. It's sort of a a mashup that you don't ever get, and I just think the kids are amazing. Yeah. Um, specifically, Finn Wolfhard as Richie. I think he's hilarious. Yeah. I think he's him and the uh, the nerd kid. This motherfucker's leaking hamburger helper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a part where Ben is like. I was doing research and I found out that Derry used to be a beaver trapping city. And then like, Richie still goes, is. still is, am I right, boys? <laughs> <laughs> and then no one, no one uh, yeah. gives him a high five. Uh, yeah. The banter between Richie and uh, was it Eddie, Eddie? Yeah. yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, I heard the list is longer than my wang. <laughs> <laughs> Go blow your dad, you mullet wearing asshole. Ever hear of staph infection? <laughs> I'll show you a staph infection. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh, that's gray water, man. Does not smell like caca to me, senor. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love the banter between the kids. Um, and I just think it looks good. It, it's got a great sound design. Uh, I feel like that never gets talked about. Uh, like, a lot of times when Pennywise shows up, there's this track that they play with, like, kids laughing. Yeah. That is really unsettling. Um but yeah, like overall, I don't really have any problems with it. I think it's a pretty, pretty close to perfect, like modern horror movie. Yeah. The only issue I ever have with the, the It remakes, and it's, I feel like it's more in part two than it is part one, but some of the, uh, some of the CGI they use for It doesn't, uh, doesn't really like translate well to like creepiness or scariness it's a lot less in the first one than it is in the second one it's it's not in the first one very much it's pretty much in the first one when he bites off georgie's arm at the beginning yeah and uh, the projector scene yeah i think are the two that has cgi and other than that it's pretty pretty limited and like i like the projector scene because of how dark it is it cuts it's like only being lit up by the projector yeah switching slides yeah but in, in two there's like scenes where the cgi is very well lit and yeah. exposed and you're like yeah well I'm, we're gonna talk about two yeah but yeah uh yeah i i really really enjoyed it it never gets any worse for me every time i watch it i still love it just as much it's fun when it's not when there isn't horror shit happening, you just like the characters and you like, you know, being around them and seeing their dynamic. Yeah. And then when it is scary, like it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's a fun horror movie. So, um, yeah, four and a half for me. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Big, big on it. Get into the big boys. And then after that, I watched it chapter two. Yeah. Which I gave a three, which now, is higher than some people. You did go into it too, saying that you still liked it like a good deal even like more than people normally do i didn't know people shit on it too that much yeah people do not like it too um and i'm a defender of it um but i can't ignore the problems that it has it's like the dark knight rises but to like a lesser extent yeah i have much more of a love for the dark knight rises than it chapter two but I think what it comes down to is I like the cast a lot for a chapter two, mm-hmm. and I just think that they're fun. Specific, I don't know why it's always Richie, but <laughs> yeah. Bill Hader as Richie is fucking amazing. Yeah, and obviously his comedic timing is great because he's Bill Hader. Yeah, but he also gets very emotional towards the end, and like it's just an overall great performance. And then I think the the guy's name is. Uh, James Ransom plays adult Eddie, and he's he's really good. He's perfect. Yeah. James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, the whole gang. It's just a, a cast that I enjoy uh, seeing together. And that that does a lot for me. 
Yeah. Uh, just having like a fun cast I enjoy watching does a lot for me. But it is way too long. Way too long. I mean, it it's almost three hours long. And when you think about what the movie is, why is like it shouldn't be three hours? The the movie is the the Losers Club comes back to Derry to stop Pennywise. Mm-hmm. That's the movie. <laughs> this isn't some big like sprawling epic or anything. It's yeah. just Pennywise is back. They go back to Derry to fight him. Yeah, that's it. Um, so it's way too long, and it's it's not one of those movies where it earns the runtime and like Inter- it's the same length as Interstellar. But when I watch Interstellar, I never. I, I'm never like, wow, this is this is taking a while, or whoa, this is slow. Like I'm yeah. just invested every second of it. This is like, there's a lot of uh, repetitive scenes, that, and this the gang also splits up because they have to go find their relics. I just think that that's stupid because yeah, you go was... to these movies for the friends being together. Yeah, I I uh, don't think it really dawned on me the amount of issues that it chapter two was until i rewatched it with you and then i realized like man this is fucking slow like this doesn't look that great like this does this and i'm like oh man yeah so it's the editing's bad it's way <clears throat> too long and uh this there's so much cgi and it's not that the cgi like looks bad really it doesn't look bad but it'll, it'll be it's, in situations. but it's cgi it's yeah it instantly takes you out of the movie cgi should be used very sparingly in horror movies yeah um and it seems like they ramped it up for two yeah and it's used at times when you don't need it yeah. because like at the beginning for example um the scene where the guy falls in the river and he's like bobbling on the surface of the water and he's and then you see him like pennywise on the side of the river like looking at him and his friend shows up and he sees him across the river pennywise is holding the guy and then he like winds his head back and his fit his head gets huge and his mouth opens up and it's like full cgi and then he like slams down and bites into his neck and i was like you can just have him bite the guy's neck yeah like just normal bill skarsgård pennywise and makeup just have him start eating the guy's neck. It doesn't have to be some big, like, eight eighteen thousand teeth, fucking thing. Like, it you could have just had him bite the guy's neck. So they're using CGI for no reason, almost. Yeah. Um. The one and that it, it takes you out, out of it. Yeah. The one that sticks out to me is the uh, fun house or the the mirror thing. That and yeah, that too. Bill's like chasing after this kid because he thinks Pennywise is gonna attack him, and then he sees Pennywise. And Pennywise has this giant cartoon tongue yeah. that he's like licking on the glass. That could have been scary, like if you just like if he sees the kid and looks behind him and Pennywise is like Pennywise looks unsettling. Mm-hmm. Him just Bill Skarsgård standing there in makeup is unsettling enough. Yep, of him just sitting there. Yep, you don't have to give him this big auga tongue. Yeah, like, don't, <laughs> don't fucking do that. That's <laughs> bad. Yeah, there's way too much CGI. Um, and also, Pennywise is in the movie for like eight minutes. Yeah. A lot of it's the the relic stuff, and that could have been cool. It's mainly with like Richie's character that I thought it was cool because his fear has changed from what it was when he was a kid. Now he's mm. an adult, and his fear is something different. I'll try not to spoil it, but it's something that like an adult would be afraid of. Yeah. And... Eddie's still afraid of the fucking leper, so we get the leper again. And I, I wish they had kind of explored that more with some of the other adults. Is like now that they're grown up, they're afraid. They're still scared of things, but they're different things. Mm-hmm. It's not as simple as being afraid of you know a burnt up kid or a werewolf or you know this and that. Yeah, some of the people have more matured fears now, and some of them are just the same. Yeah, they just kind of shoot it in, and we're like, nah. It could have been a cool way to develop their characters further, like, as adults, but I still think that that whole ritual thing, like, was kind of dumb. Yeah. And then, like, the finale is just kind of underwhelming. Like, overall. 
way too much shit goes on. Like, they still get separated in the finale Mm -hmm. when they're all supposed to be, like, together battling. Yeah, it just doesn't feel very epic. What they do ends up feeling really goofy. And um, there's one other thing I wanted to say. Um... Oh, I know. oh, there, there isn't any like memorable Pennywise moments in the movie. Yeah. When you think about the first it, there's like five or six scenes where you remember Pennywise, yeah, like doing something specific and like, oh, that scene's really good, dude. Other than like the only Pennywise scene that I even remember from it, chapter two, and I just watched it two days ago, is the bleachers scene with the little girl with the scar on her face. I was gonna say the fried egg scene. Fried egg? Yeah. What's that? When his head turns into a fried egg. Talking... <laughs> the very end? The very end. Yeah. Yeah. That That's that's engraved in my fucking head. Yeah. I just think it's... And then... The... Uh, the conclusion to It Chapter 2 was the same conclusion of It Chapter 1. Of how they beat Pennywise. Yeah. Yeah. At it and at the end of it, chapter one, they say, uh, you know, they beat them because they're not afraid of them, which is like, you know, cliche and like, you know, very uh, common, a common theme in movies. But like, they beat them because they're not afraid of them, and they belittle him, and and they they beat the shit out of him. And then in it, chapter two, they just after fighting him for twenty minutes, and they they realize, oh. We just have to tell them we're not afraid of them. We should do the same exact thing. Yeah, we'll just do the same exact thing. Like, why didn't you do this right when you got to Derry? Yeah. Just go find them and say, we're not afraid of you. And then the movie's over. Yeah. So, it's it's messy. Um, It's got a sick-ass trailer, though. It does. It has a fucking awesome trailer. Trailer's awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's a movie I can throw on and, like, enjoy. But I certainly see why people don't like it. And it's a big, big step down in quality from the first movie. Yeah. Um, I also think there's like too many jokes like when we were talking about it earlier I just thought about but like at one point Bill Hader gets hit by the deadlights and Bill Hader is a really funny guy and he's a great actor and he like gets hit by the deadlights and he does this like goofy face and like stands there funny but when you get hit with by the deadlights like that should be edge your seat like something bad is about to happen I th- I think it had that effect yeah, he made me. like he did the same thing that happened to Beverly in the first movie. No, nah, Bev had this like Evil Dead fucking like float, and her like eyes rolled back. But his eyes rolled back, no, and he it just he looks went, like, like you're possessed. Your mouth, your mouth opens up, and your eyes go like white. It's pretty much the same thing. I don't know. I think they should have done something different. Okay, I I do think it play, he played it as a joke because the way he was standing was like goofy. And he was in the middle of like saying. Well, like, he was in the middle you. of a sentence, so I guess that's why it comes off a little goofier. Yeah, because he, he was, was in standing the middle of there. screaming. He was something. standing there like this. He was like, like, just stand there normal, and then start doing the float thing. That would have been scary. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't bother me. Uh, but yeah, after that, I watched Scooby Doo. <laughs> there's something funny. No, dude, I was, I'm just, I was thinking about a joke I heard earlier. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I watched Scooby-Doo. So that's the, Scooby-Doo 1 is the one that I don't, I didn't watch a lot of. Yeah. It's 2 that I watched a ton. Yeah, I watched 2 a ton. I'm, I'm saving, I'm savoring 2. I'm, I'm waiting for the right time to watch it. Yeah. Because that's a childhood classic. You don't just me. throw on Scooby-Doo 2 at any point. That's a certified hood classic right <clears throat> yeah. there. Um, but yeah, put on Scooby-Doo 1. Just to clarify, we're talking about the 2002 live-action Scooby-Doo written by James Gunn. Yeah. That's what we're referencing. Um, and it's it's good. I gave yeah. it a three. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's Scooby-Doo. Yeah. What do you want me to say? Um, it's, it's, there's a I like I like the moment when they're getting on the plane to go to Spooky Island, and. Uh, they don't let dogs on the plane, so Scooby dresses up as an as a grandma, and then Scooby's walking towards them dressed as a grandma for the like the the group for the first time, and then uh, Daphne's like, "Who's gonna Who's gonna believe that that's a grandma? You can easily see it's a dog." 
and then Fred's like, "Who's the grandma?" <laughs> <laughs> because they make they make Fred yeah. a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the cast. It was well cast. Like, oh yeah, they feel like the characters, especially Matthew Lillard. He's the standout. He's oh yeah, a, he's a great Shaggy. Um, yeah, I I like it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like two more. You know, oh, yeah. rewatch, but it was a solid, fun time. Two was definitely gonna slap. And then yesterday we watched Twenty Eight Days Later. That movie was fucking awesome. Was it awesome because the movie was good, or was it awesome because we saw Killian Murphy's penis and ass? Both. <laughs> <laughs> The penis and ass was just gr- a gravy, dude. That's no. The movie being good was the gravy. <laughs> the penis and ass is, is you're right. You're that's right. the admission ticket. Right <laughs> you there. caught me. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we saw Killian Murphy's ass and dick and balls. <laughs> that's that's a good night, if yeah. you ask me. <laughs> that was that was pretty gnarly. That um, was awesome. So yeah, that's this. This is a movie that like I've been recommended for a long time. It's really popular. A lot of people have seen it. A lot of people love it. And uh, first of all, why was this shot on a potato? <laughs> this movie, like, I, I, I think it may have been on purpose because there's two little, there's two sections of the movie. There's, at the beginning, there's a little monkey escape thing, and then it says 28 days later. And then the whole movie happens. And then right at the end, it says 28 days later again. And then it's a jump forward. And then in that jump forward, they shoot it on a different camera that actually looks like a real movie. It looks like film. I can um, tell you what happened. And the other, like the main part of the movie, the, the real like big chunk of the movie was shot on a digital video camera. And uh, there's no reason... like. I, f- I feel like they may have did it on purpose to give it a grittier feel because there's no, like, Brennan Gleason's in this movie. Like, he was in Braveheart. Yeah. This is a fairly, it's low budget. It's not like some blockbuster, but it, it wasn't like you and your friends hanging out on the weekends making a movie. It was a pretty decent, let me look up the budget. I, I just feel like they could have afforded to shoot on film. I think at the time, the only thing that they had to record with was the uh, camera at a Walmart self-checkout. And then at the very end, uh, Killian Murphy had a birthday, and they gave him a nice camera. And he was like, use this to film the rest. Yeah, dude, the budget was $8 million. Fucking... That's crazy. So that was obviously a, a um, an intentional choice to make it look like shit. Because at the end looks good like it the picture quality i'm also i want to clarify the movie doesn't look bad like cinematography wise and shot selection wise it's very well shot and the there's a lot of shots that are great and i like the way it was shot it was just the camera that they shot it with looks like my 2009 motorola razor shot it yeah so sometimes they use it though like they that one shot of them driving through that uh that field and the flowers are all fuzzy and it looks like some kind of crazy Oil, van gogh like pastel painting, painting or yeah something. yeah um so it's a little hard for me to get into a movie when it looks terrible so i get that it, it was probably an artistic choice to make it look gritty but just shoot it on film i mean don't shoot it on a video camera don't do that um, I really liked it. I thought, but it outside kind of, of the visuals, outside of the shitty camera, I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought I. St- I think the the grittiness of it kind of enhanced it a little bit. I don't think so. I think I'd enjoy it more if it was if it looked like a movie, not a video, uh, not a YouTube video from two thousand seven. I think it plays into the like low budget aspect of it. Like I know the budget was eight million, but I don't know. I, I really liked it. I mean, all I know is the budget for Nightcrawler was less than eight million, and Nightcrawler is an infinitely better looking movie. And sure, it's newer, but I can pull up examples of movies from two thousand two that look 
infinitely better for around that budget. So, hey, my name's Paul. <laughs> um, um, it's not a like a great critique to just say, oh, I don't like the camera it was shot on, but it, to me, it makes a big difference in in my in my viewing experience when I when it looks like that. So, it's something I wanted to bring up. But yeah, it's it's interesting. It's a zombie story ish sort of a zombie story. Mm-hmm. I'd um, say overall it's that we like haven't zombies. we hadn't really seen before. It reminded me. I know this came out first, but it reminded me sort of of The Last of Us. Yeah. Um, when he, uh, when Killian like, what happens at the end? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it very... kind of was giving me Last of Us vibes, and then the song oh is fucking God, sick. Dude. Um, it goes hard as shit. I looked up the song, and it's just called Twenty Eight Days Later," and it's like the theme for the movie, and it goes pretty fucking hard. That's bad. Oh, fuck, that's a pizza commercial. I'm not gonna. Play it. <laughs> I was gonna play it, and then fucking pizza whopper, head. whopper, whopper, oh, whopper yeah. started fucking. Yeah, never mind. Nice. You're not gonna hear it. You're giving them free um, ad space now. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the song's great. Um, performances were all good except for, dude, that little girl. I hate being mean to kids in movies. It's not my thing. But holy fuck, <laughs> are we for real yeah. right now? That she was, was a little. Um... That was crazy, and it it was even worse because she was acting with Brendan Gleeson, and Killian Murphy. And the mom from Moonlight. Yeah. So she stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, that's yeah. all I'm gonna say. I don't wanna. I don't wanna be mean. I. I try to. I kids get a free pass. Yeah. In terms of critiquing performances. Not to mention like, fucking, dancing around some of the biggest fucking heavy hitters around, dude. Yeah. I would. I would be shitting my pants if they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna do this like, indie movie. And, oh, who's in it? Oh, Killian Murphy, Brennan Gleeson. I'd be like, what? What? Yeah. Well, Killian Murphy was uh, n- that was what made him famous. Was yeah, yeah, I later. know. But like, he's a phenomenal actor, and yeah. so was Brendan Gleeson, and, and that was going to be a hard sell for that little girl, no matter what. Yeah. So yeah, I I enjoyed it. I gave it a four. Heck yeah, I arrived it's, at the same notion. It's sort of what I expected. Um, didn't like blow my blow my pants off. Yeah, you know, didn't make you shoot a rocket out of your. Yeah, but it was it was good. I enjoyed yeah. it. Um, and I think that's all for the watch list. So we can go into... Oh, I had a solo venture. Oh, The Imitation Game. Yeah, I watched The Imitation Game. And it was really fucking good. Oh, yeah? Like a lot better than I had anticipated. I thought it was going to be kind of boring. I don't want to get into spoilers because you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Great performance from Ben Cum. Ben Cum, um, classic. Kira Knightley, mm. girl from Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. She slapped. Everyone in there did a good job, and it's just it was so interesting. I really, uh, really mm. enjoyed it. You guys should check it out. Nothing to do with horror. Sorry, it's a little out of left field. But, yeah, it was kind of weird. But you know, put that on. I was, uh, I was in the middle of doing something, and I my eyes were free, so it went on the tube. Eh. And I, I guess feasted. there's worse things you could do. I feasted them. I guess you could commit like vehicular manslaughter, and that'd be worse. So. I could. No, I'm, I'm not going to say. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say. It. Go, go on to the the All list. Right. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're gonna go through our top ten most underrated horror movies, and I got a preface. Underrated is subjective. All right, because. I might say a movie, and then someone might say, "What are you talking about?" That movie? everyone knows that movie. Exactly. But exactly. it's all subjective because it might be known, like the movie might be popular and people know what it is. But I think it's better than people give it credit for. So I'll, I'll say it's underrated. So I'm not. These aren't movies that you you've probably heard of all these movies before. Yeah. But they're just movies that I think are better than what people give them credit for. Yeah. Um. Just, just a preface. So, do you want to start with um, some that are on both of our lists? I'm assuming. What do you think's on both of our lists? There's three that I think is on both of our lists. Maybe okay. four. Okay. I'll tell you my number one, and okay. I, I'm pretty sure it's 
well, this isn't ranked, but like the first one on my list. Go ahead. I'm pretty sure you got it too. I'm going to start with Session 9. I got Session 9 on my list. Yeah. yeah. Um, Session 9 is genuinely a good horror movie. Yeah. So, I really, really liked it. Session 9 is something that I was recommended. Like, I had just seen it around on TikTok. People would say if... Uh, if horror movies don't really scare you, check this out. And it was always Session 9. and It would always come up on Google when you search like underrated horror movies. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to watch it for a long time, and we watched it earlier this year. And I just thought it was amazing. Yeah. It's a slow burn, so you have to be prepared for that. It's It takes a while to get going. But the concept is this uh, team goes into an abandoned hospital to remove asbestos. Yeah. And spooky things happen. Yeah. And there's stuff in the movie <clears throat> they kind of tap into that. Again, there's nothing that I can explain, give like an actual explanation of why it's like creepy or eerie, but it just kind of taps into that like there'll be a shot of a hallway and like there'll be a door that's open at the end of the hallway and like the sunlight's going in and you see like a gurney sitting in the middle of the hallway. Yeah. Like something about it I'm like what the fuck? Something's yeah, that's the happen, shot dude. on the poster. Yeah, and it's... I'm like something's about to happen. I don't know what I don't like what I'm what's happening. I feel uneasy. Like there's there's parts of the movie where it's like I got a pit in my stomach, dude. Something's about to fucking happen. Yeah. It's like I said it takes a while to get going, but once it does, it's pretty wild and there's twists and I feel like it's pretty unpredictable in terms of what happens. And it's also a movie that a lot of the movie takes place during the day, which is rare for horror movies. But then when it when it is at night, it's fucking creepy. Yeah. And it was low budget. It was shot for like a million dollars, I want to say. I'm going to I'm going to look it up and make sure. But extremely low budget, pretty much one location, and it's 1.5 million was the budget. Oh my god. So, that's wild. The performances are all like really good, especially the lead guy. I wanna, I wanna see his name, cause he's the best. Session nine. His name is Peter Mullen. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's great. Um, and then the other guy, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> classic uh, Phil. There's, if you want a good time, if you want a good good laugh, go to YouTube and type in. <laughs> session nine fuck you <laughs> yes. because there's a scene where <laughs> this character named phil i'm not going to give you the context but there's gordon and phil and gordon walks away from phil and then phil says hey gordon and then the camera turns back to him and, and he points at the camera and he goes fuck you <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking nuts it's it feels when we watched it I paused it and looked at Carl, and I was like, "Did that just happen?" We rewatched, we rewound it like, three it times. like five times. Yeah, because it's hysterical. It's so funny. It's just a nice little like random self-aware thing that they put like, in, like just goofy moment, like goof off. Yeah, and then also with session nine, like the the idea of it, like the theme that you're supposed to pick up on, I think is really interesting. It's a movie that kind of stuck with me, like the for very a while. end, the the tape that plays yeah that's fucking cool as shit dude yeah it's really awesome what they did with the tapes was really sick yeah and i've been recommending it to my friends for a long time and a couple of them watched it recently and didn't love it as much as me i think one of them gave it like a two and a half and another one gave it a three and a half yeah dude, i know some so, dumb guys too so uh, i don't know i mean Maybe I'm maybe I'm loopy or something, but nah, dude. I Session watched Nine's... Session Nine and I was like, "This is this movie's built different yeah, than Session other Nine's horror a movies." Fucking unit. It dude. rewards your patience. It rewards your intelligence for noticing details, and it's unpredictable. It takes place during the day. The performances are great. It was shot for one point five million, and I love recommending it to people. I think it's yeah. great. Yep. Um, Simple as that. What's your next one on the list? 
Um, another one that I think we both have on our list is The Collector. I do. I do yeah. have it on there. The Collector, I've... I read I've read reviews about the collector of people saying it's like just another saw like uh, wannabe and it's just like more torture porn. But the collector has I, the concept of it, the idea of it, I think is a really cool idea to begin with. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it is similar to saw, but I think it's like more advanced. And there's some shots that are fucking awesome. Uh, that are like super high stakes but the idea is a thief breaks into a house to steal valuables and when he breaks into the house he realizes that a serial killer is also in the house yeah and there's some really high stakes shots of like he'll go and hide in a room and they'll do this top down view and you'll see like just him right behind the door, and then the guy will walk up and stand like right in front of the door. It's and a walk away. It's the bird's eye shot from like John Wick Four, where you can yeah. see in each room over top. It feels like it was directed by James Wan. It yeah. has that Wan flair with the camera work, and it's a simple concept. Um, like the story isn't going to blow your mind or anything, but I think the way it's filmed. And the way it's executed is, is just really fun and interesting. And the the guy in the movie, like the collector, the main villain, is um, memorable to me for some reason. The way he the way he was designed visually just yeah. sticks out. They kind of do his eyes kind of glow in his mask, like eyes glow in Blade Runner, like the replicant's eyes glow. Yeah, and it gives it this really weird feeling when you're looking at him. Um, yeah. He's kind of a, a crazy guy. I think the the main character, I think he's a really cool character, good, easy character to root for. Yeah. Um, and I think they're just like, I don't know, it really keeps you on the edge of yeah. your seat. Because they set up the character where he's not just some like random criminal breaking into a house you don't care about. They set it up like somebody owes somebody money and there's high stakes and he has to go break into this house to get this jewel for his family like yeah. to you know there's you understand why he's doing what he's doing so uh you know he kind of becomes the hero of the story so, yeah yeah i i kind of hear people shit on the collector a lot and say it's not very good and i don't think it's some crazy thing i think i have it at uh, i think i have it at a four but I could see myself lowering it to like a three and a half. I just think it's it's for the amount of people that have seen it and talk about it. I think it's underrated and it's it's a really good time. Yeah, I think it's really good sleeper pick of like you know if you can turn your brain off and just enjoy the movie and not like oh this is just like Saw. And it was pitched as like it was pitched to be like another Saw movie. It was gonna be like a prequel to Saw. Mm-hmm. Of like I guess Jigsaw going out and killing people, but. I think it stands up on its own fine. I think it's a really interesting story. I even like the collection, too. Not as much as the collector, but the collection is also good. Yeah, I didn't put it on here because I haven't seen it in a while. And last time I watched it, I remembered not loving it. Maybe I need to rewatch it. But I remember thinking both were... Obviously, the collector's better. but And that's the one I recommend to people. But both of them I thought were cool. Mm-hmm. Really unique kills. Good shots. Just cool shit. Yeah. Um, and pretty pretty good, uh, like, gore and yeah. fucked up shit, if that's what you're into. Um, but my next one is Sinister. Sinister's on my list as well. Of course it is, because you're a smart guy sometimes. Yeah. Um, Sinister is, the, is what I claim as the scariest movie ever made. There's just something about Sinister that is terrifying to me. I don't know what it is. There's other movies for other people that they're like, oh, dude, it's fucking, it's the scariest movie I've ever seen. And then I watch it and I'm like, eh. Like, yeah. Not yeah. trying to be cool or anything. It's just the like, I just don't really have a reaction to it. And then some people watch Sinister and they're like, I mean, it was fine. Like, it was a little creepy, I guess. 
And I'm like, dude, I can put on pretty much any horror movie when I go to bed, except for Sinister. I yeah. I will not. I don't even want to watch Sinister alone. Like, I think it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, I I think it's super scared too, or super scary too. Like, I'm not uh, I'm not gonna not watch it alone because I'm not a fucking puss bucket, but it's really scary. How many times have you watched it alone? I don't know. Oh, that's weird. Probably because I mean, you haven't a bunch, dude. Probably because you haven't. Anyways, um, yeah, I think it's the best use of found footage in a movie ever, at least in a horror movie. It doesn't really get put in the found footage genre since it's only a section of the movie that's found footage. But yeah, I think what it's sort of like how we were talking about the Poughkeepsie tapes and how we wanted there to be a real story and like keep you invested. So you're not just watching like torture porn. Sinister is that yeah. it's like a good story where you have these, um, what are they called? Um, snuff films, snuff films. Yeah. And you have these snuff films, but it doesn't feel like, I don't know. It doesn't feel like that's what you're watching the movie for. It doesn't it's feel like, like it's like, it doesn't feel like the director has some fetish. Yeah. It just feels like a natural like uh, progression of the story. Yeah, it's just there's a mystery. And that's I think some of the genius behind Sinister is that like there's events that happen and things that you see and you're like, well, "What the fuck is going on here?" Yeah. And you're slowly piecing it together. And I think the reveal by the end of the movie of what's actually going on, I think it's worth it. Yeah. I think it's a, it's really smart and really mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. And I have seen people shit on Sinister and like the design of the main demon. People fucking hate it. I don't know how anyone could hate it. I think it's terrifying. But I you think never, the way he looks is creepy as shit. You never really fucking see him. You never really get a clear shot I mean, of him. At the, at the end, you do. Even then, it's like from this like, uh, like bottom of the ground, like up at him, and you kind of, like they it's a they do a great job of keeping. Am I him... thinking about no. There's an ending. I'm assuming it's not Sinister Two. I don't think I remember like shit from Sinister Two because it's dog shit. But. Does he walk down a hallway? Yeah. I thought at the end of Sinister 1... Uh, spoilers for like 30 seconds for Sinister. Isn't the end of Sinister... Like, he comes down... I thought he came down from like the the attic and like walked down the hallway and like carrying a kid. He doesn't come down from the attic, but like... There's a projector going and he like comes out of the projector and picks up the kid and walks out. But he... Like, the camera is like from the perspective of Ethan Hawke and you're like looking at him from like this like looking up at him and you still don't get a, like a really clear shot of him I thought I remembered it being a pretty clear like broad daylight shot I don't think so hmm. I, I definitely I'm not gonna it's... look it up because it's fucking creepy so <laughs> yeah uh... but like even just like him in the pool like it's that was such a cool way to like show him mm -hmm. but also not show him yeah. Because the ripples of the pool distort what he looks like. Yeah. And you get the far shot of him in the bushes, which I think was fucking terrifying, yeah. too. Yeah. And then you... And then, the like, the tapes, the way they're labeled, and, like, the creepy titles he gives each tape... Yeah. ...is unsettling. And then you have the soundtrack that plays during the... What? The summer barbecue one? Dude. That was, like, created the by a psychiatrist. is horrifying. Yeah yeah so yeah you got ethan hawk of course he's the man he's a fucking animal dude but yeah i might i'll probably have to rewatch it this this halloween oh yeah if really? i want to get actually scared by something it, i'll have to put that on the truth i don't know what it to... is i don't know why that movie specifically fucks me up so much and like no other movies really do like i i can go to bed and put on the shining and just be like ah dude i fell asleep yeah. watching like insidious at, at its peak it was my second yeah. time watching it i like fell asleep yeah i can put on like the witch i can put on the shining i can put on the exorcist 
can go to bed to whatever, but fucking not sinister. Yeah. I will not do that. Um, but yeah, I think it's great. So yeah. check that out. Sinister is fucking the shit. Yeah. So what's your next one? All right. What else do I have on here that I think we both have? No, just go in order. Whatever. Whatever Malignant. your list is. That's my next one. Ah, there we go. Yep. Yep. Uh, Malignant's on here because it fucking rules. And You're if goddamn you don't, right, brother. If you, if you don't agree, then... Check your fucking hypotenuse, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let the fucking door hit you on the way out. Yeah. You're fucking dunce. Get the fuck out of here. I'm you... talking to you, Alan. Yeah, get out of here, dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> um, yeah, Malignant's fucking awesome. Yeah, Malignant absolutely kicks ass. It now, did the biggest 180 on us. I, I don't know how many times I'm going to fucking say this, but we went to the theater, watched Malignant, got like a third of the way in, and you were like, dude, let's bail. We gotta get I thought it was after the opening scene. It might have been. Yeah, it was after the opening scene in the hospital. Because the acting was so uh, unique <laughs> that I was <laughs> that like... was polite. Yeah, I was like, Carl, should we leave? Like, this yeah. is... Also, uh, interesting little nugget about our malignant watch. I brought a Jimmy John sandwich to a movie for the first time ever. You did do When that. we saw Malignant. You did that. I don't normally bring real food into movies because first people have to smell it like if it's something warm people are probably going to smell it you don't want to distract people with smells Mm -hmm. and it's just like it can be loud the rapper's loud like i normally just get popcorn or i sneak in some m&ms or something yeah um but i brought in a jimmy john sandwich because i hadn't eaten and i was hungry and we were like rushing there and i just took it in with me and then the movie started so i opened up my sandwich and i started eating and then i was like this is fucking gross. Like <laughs> you, what was happening on screen was nasty as shit. Yuck. And yuck, I stopped, I had to stop eating at my <laughs> sandwich was sitting on my lap. And then, uh, she goes, we have to cut out the cancer. And then it goes to the opening credits. And then I was like, okay, I can eat now. Yeah. So that, I just felt like saying that. I don't know. That's just part <laughs> yeah. of my it was, experience. That was crazy that you bought some into the, into yeah. the theater. Yeah. Hey. It's not. I'm ideal, not going to tell you where he smuggled it in at, but I think it was warm when he if, pulled it out. Yeah, I think <laughs> if you had three guesses, you'd, you'd probably you'd probably figure it out. You'd probably crack the code. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, *Malignant* is a movie that I think you have to watch twice, which I don't think is a bad thing. Like some people say, "Oh, if I have to watch it twice, then it's probably not a good movie," and it's like. No, I, I kind of think, think the opposite. Yeah, if you I think if make a movie me sit down and watch it, like experience it over and over again, that's good. I think if a movie requires two watches, then there's a lot there to chew on, mm-hmm. and there's a lot there for you to pick up on on second watch, and that's normally the sign of a good movie. So, the first time we watched Malignant, we came home and all I could think was like that was fucking weird. Yeah. I was, it wasn't like a positive or a negative reaction. It was just like, that was unique. And then the rewatch is when I, my love for Malignant came. Yeah. I think it requires a rewatch because there's so much, uh, like there's a, there's a twist in the movie and, before the twist happens, it feels like a generic horror movie with bad acting. Yeah. But then once the twist happens and it reveals itself as a new movie, then you realize that that was all on purpose. Yeah. And that's what the movie is. It's a campy, fun horror movie. It's not supposed to be serious. So once you know that and you go back the second time and you know what the movie is, then when you see the acting again... You, you you aren't thinking this is bad acting. You're thinking, oh, this is fun. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to rewatch it. If you gave it like a three star on first watch, that's good. Because it can get... There's people that do a lot worse than that. Yeah, it's such a drastic rankings. like rug pull that yeah. it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing. It requires a rewatch... Once you know what the movie is, then you can rewatch it 
knowing what you're getting into and then you just have fun last time i watched it, i watched it earlier this year i just had so much fun i think the pacing's great it's only like an hour 45 minutes um the visuals i think are really good the The camera work yeah the camera work by james wan with like specifically there's a chase in a house and he's doing like bird's eye view shots and he's like yeah the camera's like weaving and chasing her throughout the house and um there's a lot of foreshadowing and and dialogue sick. the score the little yeah, soundtrack the score is like synthy like john carpentery music yeah and then you also get the where's my mind motif which i played on an earlier episode um it's like where's my mind but more electronic and like yeah. amplified and the action in the second half is awesome oh and my god yeah, filmed nice. i have no idea how they even filmed it because it it just looks so unique and i it was probably a nightmare to choreograph yeah but it's so much fun that's my advice to people who haven't seen malignant or have seen it but don't like it is yeah. my advice is it's just supposed to be fun it's not supposed yeah. to be scary it's not supposed to creep you out that's not that's not what every horror movie's goal is. Yeah. It can be a horror movie. Like the Evil Dead to me. Like that's... The Evil Dead is supposed to be a horror movie that's just fun. It's not yeah. supposed to scare you. Yeah. And think of Malignant in that Evil Dead, like Raimi universe, where it's just fun horror and it's not supposed to be creepy. Yeah. And I think you'll grow a new appreciation for it. And it's just James Wan not giving a fuck. Not giving yeah, a flying fuck about anything and saying, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, I know what needs to be done, and here it is. Yeah, so, yeah, just watch it. Just watch it, have fun. Be a cool guy. Yeah, don't don't overthink it. Don't think, oh, this isn't scary, all the acting's bad. Fuck you. You're silly. You're a silly man. (laughs) Yeah. So, I want to do a full episode on Malignant, so. That'll probably be coming up, dude. I'm ready to watch it. Yeah, I wanted I want to like watch it and take notes and make sure I get everything down that I want to talk about because yeah. we can have a pretty extended discussion about it. We'll do a full Malig walkthrough. Hell yeah! On why it's awesome. Yep. All right. Um, my next one on the list is Creep. I put Creep on my list too. You did. I did, and it's, even though you shit on it, it's not for me, but it's still a really cool movie. Like, it's a, a movie I feel like no one really has watched. And I feel like the average person would really enjoy it. I fucking love Creep. It's right up my alley. It sort of... I don't like it nearly as much, so don't, don't take this and run with it. But it sort of gives me, like, American Psycho vibes, which I really enjoy. I love how low budget it is, and it feels like a movie that... I could make or like one of my friends could make because you just kind of rent out a cabin over the weekend and go do some weird shit yeah. and um, I think the premise is really good like a, a guy hires a videographer on Craigslist something that could happen in real yeah, life it's yeah he, he hires a videographer on Craigslist to like do something which he's, he claims he's filming he's dying or something he's sick so he's filming videos for his son that's not born yet. So his he knows what his dad looked like. And then uh, you find out that's not exactly what's going on. And I just think it's funny. I think it has a lot of dark comedy that I think is gold. And Mark Duplass is just... I just think he's great. Um, I'm kind of a fan of him from the league. So I kind of just like him in general. But I think it's funny. I think... When it wants to be creepy, it is. It can be really unsettling. And the ending is amazing. I think I think it is. Yeah. I think the ending is fucking amazing. And it sticks with you. And you're not going to forget the ending to Creep. You're not going to be like, boy, I can't remember I definitely, how it ends. It's definitely burned into my memory. Yeah. I think it's really, really awesome. I have yeah. it at a four star. And... It's a good example of how to make a low budget movie. Yeah. It's not 
anything crazy like to me I, I don't like it as much as you but i do think it's a cool movie to refer to pete like to give people to watch and be like hey you should check out creep mm-hmm. and i think most people would find it like interesting it's just not to me it's not super scary it is funny and that's kind of that's kind of all it has going for me and i do like how low budget it is it yeah. does seem like two guys could make this and have a, a cool time yeah it's also really short it's it's like an hour 17 minutes yeah it's super so easy you're watch. not gonna get bored during it like it's it's pretty fast to get through yeah um and then shout out to creep 2 not as good but i still enjoy it i think i think if you watch the first one and you like it check out the second one because it's more of the same stuff um just not as not as good but i like it i need to rewatch creep and i still haven't seen creep 2 i want to i want to rewatch it so we can do that put me down on the list pal Woo! yep creep watch with the boys Hell fellas yeah. time all right Gotta what's your next one my next one is green room mm. now i kind of got off into the weeds a bit trying to decipher like I had a hard time. I had a couple of movies on my list. It's like, is this a horror movie or is this uh, like suspense mm-hmm. or like a thriller? Because mm-hmm. like I had 10 Cloverfield Lane on my list at one point. Oh. And I was like, I don't know for sure if that's a horror movie. It's not. So it, it's like a psychological thriller. But I was like, you know, Green Room, is that really a horror movie or is it a thriller? But I think it leans more into horror because it's it's very claustrophobic. They're trapped in this one location. And I think the amount of gore in it is what ramps it up to be like a horror movie too. Yeah, I don't have like a very uh, f- uh, stern stance on it either way. It's not on my list. And I think that's mainly just because I don't necessarily think it's underrated. I think it's properly rated. I think people really like it. So I was afraid of such an event to happen as that's, well. That's my main thing of me, like not really being in the know of what's uh, what people talk about. I don't know of many people that have seen Green Room, but that's also just talking to people in like my my day to day life. I don't know about the online. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I think people. it's got a good letterbox score. Let me see what it is. But I like I like to refer to people. I think it's. A really cool. It's got premise. a three point seven on Letterboxd. Three point yeah, that's that's about right. I gave it. I think I gave it like a four star. Yeah, three point seven is a great score for a horror movie. But I like I like giving that for people to watch who haven't seen it. Most people really like it. Really, uh, really suspenseful. Really gory. Uh, really gory. Really fucking gory. Yeah. And um, I don't know. It just fucking kicks ass. Yeah, I, I like how I claustrophobic too. it is too. Yeah, one setting. Yeah, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart coming in. I would have Fuck fucking yeah. walked right out of the room the second I heard his voice and saw his bald head. <laughs> I'm out. You Sorry guys, y'all, y'all got this one. <laughs> See you later, the chilies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have too much to say about it. I've seen it once, but I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my next one's Good Night, Mommy. I haven't seen that one. I figured it would be on your list, though. Yeah, I really like Good Night, Mommy. It's a slow burn, but it's got some really creepy visuals. It has a really unsettling story, too. Like, the way it all unfolds is upsetting. Now, so, is, is Good Night, Mommy a remake, or is... Well, there, there a is a remake, but that's oh, not what a remake I'm talking of about. Good Night. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. remember which one it was. No, I'm talking about the good one, the original, <laughs> the original movie. Um, yeah, I think it's a really interesting story. It has a, a great twist, great performances. Uh, it, you never exactly know where it's heading, and you think you might, and then so, and then you see something that makes you second guess what you thought. Uh cool location i'm not sure exactly where it was filmed but it's 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 in a foreign land and just a really like beautiful place and i just think it's creepy 
Yeah. I just think it, even if you just read the synopsis or watch the trailer, it's got a creepy trailer. Yeah. I remember when I was a pussy, uh, like back when I was a kid yeah. and I didn't watch horror movies. So my version of watching horror movies was watching horror movie trailers. Yeah. That was like how I got my that fix. That was all you needed. <laughs> that was me getting my fix of like getting scared. So yeah. I would, uh, I would watch the trailer to Goodnight Mommy and it was creepy as shit. So... I rec I I've got it at a four star. I recommend it to everyone. I think it's I think it's awesome. Yeah. Unfortunately, I know the twist to Goodnight Mommy before I watched it because I'm an asshole. <laughs> but <laughs> how'd that happen? I I don't know. I like watching um I like listening to videos like while I'm working in the garage or like doing stuff and I think I had a horror like people talking about horror movies and one of them was Goodnight Mommy and I didn't skip it because I was like doing shit. Yeah, that's and fucking stupid. I overheard the, right. the twist to it. You're an asshole. But it does seem like a really cool movie. Yeah, it is. It's really yeah. cool. My next movie is Room 1408. It's just 1408. My yeah. next movie is Room 1408. 1408. Uh, you're fucking up bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's It's 1408, guys. That's yeah. the movie he's referencing. So anyway, Room 1408. Really? 1408. <laughs> so, the part in the movie where we're like, man, we, we got to get out of room 1408. That's the best. <laughs> no, but 1408 is is actually like a crazy fucking movie. It's pretty underrated. I'd like to say. Let me let me check it's Letterboxd. It's really nuts. Let me see what we're working with here. Even if the score on Letterboxd is high, like, I didn't don't really know of anyone that has seen 1408 3.2 and there's only five people on my friends list that have watched it and i follow 80 people only five of them have seen it so that's a pretty low amount yeah so yeah we watch oh, when did we watch that like a year or two ago um it's a, based on a stephen king short story yeah and it features john cusack Yes, sir. And Sam Jackson. And Sam Jackson. Sam motherfucking motherfucking Jackson. Yeah. Uh, Sam. Let's get uh, uh, motherfucking <laughs> snakes on this motherfucking plane, Jackson. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie. I don't know the full quote, but yeah, something like that. Uh, or Sam. Uh, he sucked my long black <laughs> pecker, Jackson. Yeah. That's from the Hateful Eight. Hell yeah! For the for those cool guys. For the homies. Yeah. Um, but fourteen oh eight is a fucking roller coaster of a movie, dude. Yeah. It's um, it's about this uh, guy John Cusack. He writes horror novels that he claims are based on real things. He tells people like, I I went to this hotel and this is what happened. It's all kind of bullshit. Oh, I thought he was like debunking horror stuff i thought he was like a blogger that like would debunk haunted places because he didn't buy into it is that what it is yeah sinister he's a horror or he's a true crime author and then in 1408 he would he would go to different hotels that people would say was haunted and he would debunk it oh, maybe that's what it is the start of the movie he goes to a hotel room that is supposed to be haunted and nothing happens or like you hear noises but it's just pipes or something and so 1408 is one that's like been coming up over and over again he finally like and he'll go to these places and stay the night in hopes of something happening so he's a doubter of the supernatural to begin with yeah that's that's and as shit starts happening because he's like i'm about to encyclopedia brown this bitch he's like if he made the bed put the chocolates down then he's got to be in the dresser and then like yeah. opens up the doors yeah yeah so, so the they set up like the mystique around the room fourteen oh eight like really well, and they Sam Jackson like tells stories about like oh the last person that was in that room this happened to him and uh yeah. it's sort of like the room in uh, The Shining like yeah. where there's just so much mystique around it that it's creepy as shit and yeah he. There's just so much that fucking goes on in like one room. Yeah. In fourteen oh eight. It's not a lot. It's claustrophobic. It's, like it yeah. it actually makes you feel really uncomfortable while you're watching it. Yeah. 
it's not super long too, but so much happens. Yeah. It feels like you're fucking trapped in this room forever. Yeah. It it did make me feel weird and like I was locked in a room and yeah. going crazy. It makes you feel like you're going crazy. Yeah. And uh, that's a that's a compliment. Yeah. That's uh that's what it intended to do. Yeah, and I don't think many people talk about it, so yeah. that's it's on my list too. I don't know if I said that. You didn't. But yeah. I'm glad. Glad I got another good pick in. Yeah. Uh and then my two the next two on my list are it and it chapter two, which we talked about. Yep. And it's not like underrated, everyone's seen it, but I think it's better than people say it is. So mm -hmm. that's why it's still on there. And then it chapter two I still really enjoy it and I don't think it's like the worst thing ever. Which What's the average rating do. on it two? Uh two point nine. Which is bad. It's almost a three star. I mean, I mean, don't you have it at a three store? I mean, yeah, but it's close to a three and a half. A two point nine on Letterboxd is pretty not good. Okay. Yeah. Um. Fuck was I? Oh yeah, chapter two. Yeah, we talked about them. I don't. Yeah. Have too much. Both the movies. New to say. Big fan. Yeah. And then. I have some honorable mentions, but I have one more on my list. I'll go ahead and just rip that off. My last Bandaid. one is Wreck. Hell yeah. Which we watched a couple months ago. It's a found footage movie. And it's very intense. Got a great ending. Really great ending. Yeah. Really fucking creepy ending. I have uh, Wreck on my list too. That's so good. We can, we can go ahead and... Pop that zit right there. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, it's fucking good. Yeah, it's uh, probably my favorite found footage movie. Mm. Um, Do you count Sinister? No, not like if you count Sinister, then it's not. I, I like Sinister more, but mm. full found footage, like start to finish, basically, um, it's definitely wreck. I haven't like I I had to have to rewatch Blair Witch, but I have a feeling that. It's not. It's gonna be better than Blair Witch whenever I watch it, but that's just me. It's better. I've watched them both this year, and I got told you about Blair Witch. It's it's a complicated movie to grade because it takes so long for shit to happen. Yeah. But then once it does, it's creepy as shit. And Rex more like well paced throughout. It doesn't take a long time to get going. Like it, it pretty within like fifteen minutes, you're seeing some fucked up shit. Yeah, you're so, at full go. Yeah. Um, pretty soon. Yeah. So, side story about wreck. Somebody told me to watch wreck. Like, uh, like I think it was earlier this year, and I accidentally put on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that <laughs> because I thought. I, I don't know. I just thought that that's what they said. I thought they told me to watch VHS, but they said wreck and I watched VHS and it was kind of poopy and I didn't really like it that much. Yeah. VHS is a movie where it's like, it's like five short stories or like six yeah. or I don't know how many there are. It's a bunch of short stories and only like two of them are good. Yeah. So overall, not a great film. Definitely got, me. uh, Definitely would have had a better time watching Wreck. <laughs> yeah, so we eventually watched the correct movie, which was yeah. Wreck, and had a great time. Heck yeah. So check that out. Wreck's kick ass. Yeah. What so about you? My, uh, my last two, um, again, I could be way out of line here, but I have Reanimator on my list. Um, Honestly, I don't know how... I don't now know the reception to Reanimator. I think it's probably got high reviews, but I think Reanimator is fucking amazing. It's got a three point eight. Yeah, I th I think it's amazing. So I don't know if pretty high, but I don't know if a lot of people have seen it. But um, like anytime I would look at like 
top 10 horror movies of all time or like top 20. Like, I think it's damn near perfect. Like, I feel the way about reanim- Reanimator as you do about it. Mm. Like, I think I have it at a four and a half or a four. Yeah, Reanimator is really cool. Yeah, I thought it was absolutely nuts. And then, like, considering the age of it, how, like, fucked up it was, it was kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. And I love the visuals of everything. The fucking glowing green stuff that he's got. The fucking character being nuts. Like, everything about it. Like, just watch Reanimator. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, I don't remember a ton about Reanimator. So, I can't really say too much about it. But I I think we watched it last year. But I liked it. Yeah. It's, pretty it's a cool, up. like, 80s sci-fi body horror movie kind of it kind of feels like a cronenberg movie but it's not yeah it'd be uh better than most of his movies yeah i was gonna say it's like that but it's good uh i like the fly i think the fly is pretty great but oh yeah the fly is good yeah other than the fly like i i've seen videodrome and i wasn't really huge on it i like reanimator a lot more than videodrome yeah but even like the fly, I think I like reanimated more than the fly. I'd have to rewatch them. I'd say right now I prefer the fly. Yeah, I, I don't know. My my winner's just super hard for reanimator because uh, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my last pick, I wanted to throw a curveball in, mm. and uh, when I googled this, it came up as something and horror. So. It better not be what I think it is. What do you think it is? What is it? What do you think it is? I'm not saying it's not what you think it is. Okay. What do you think it is? Well, what is it? (laughs) What what is it? I don't know what you think it is. You don't know what this is. I I don't think. That's bone. That's what I think it is. No, it's not. Okay. Bone tomahawk is what it is. That's a horror movie. It is a horror movie. I thought that was a western. It is a western. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I watched this. Um, I watched this on my own, and I expected a western a thousand percent. I, people said that like, like it was brutal, and I was like, all right, so it gets a little violent, whatever. There's an aggressive shootout. You know, I'll go fuck myself. But <laughs> the um, end is absolutely insane. And it gets into like, I don't know, there's some fucking like really horrific shit that happens. I don't want to spoil anything, but it does start off as like a normal Western and they have to go like rescue this guy and then shit hits the fan like pretty quick. Hmm. And I, it stood out to me because number one, it's a Western and I feel like that's, it's rare you get like period horror movies like The Witch and shit like that mm-hmm. that's not like the 80s i've never heard of a western horror movie yeah and this so. is that and it's by the guy i think by the guy that did brawl and cell block 99 oh. which i also fucking thought was gnarly yeah so yeah you were also big on dragged across concrete wasn't big on that one <laughs> he i don't think anyone's big on that one he 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 was he was getting silly. Yeah, he was a little goofball. Yeah. That was a, that was just a a joke. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was just a funny that he made. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bone Tomahawk and I I was like really struggling to find a pick. I was like I want to do something that uh people really haven't. I feel like no one's really heard of. And as I was gro- going through my watch list, I saw Bone Tomahawk and I was like. I wonder if that's like technically horror. And I looked it up and it's Western horror. And I was like, oh. well, fuck yeah, it's going on the list. Whoa. Yeah. I would have never guessed. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's that's our official top 10 list. But yeah. I threw on a couple honorable mentions that don't make the list for one reason or another. I've got an honorable mention I can throw out. Okay. Vacancy. Oh. You didn't uh, like it that much? And it's probably not that good. I might have, like, that's the reason why I didn't put it on the list is because, like, I don't know for sure people would go and, like, watch that and be like, that was cool. But 
I watched it, rented it from the old Blockbuster. Watched it. Thought it was a crazy, super suspenseful movie. I've rewatched it in my older years, and it hasn't been quite as intense. It's a little bit more slow than I remember it being, but I still think the concept is really cool. Mm-hmm. I think some of the scares are good, too. Uh, What is this? Vacancy. I just zoned out. Um, that's cool. <laughs> How about you? Talk I heard about, you, I heard you say your... vacancy, and then I started thinking about vacancy, and then I was like, "How about you? What start... fuck are we talking about? Talk about your list, and then I'll just leave." I wanted to say something about vacancy. Um, <laughs> I was excited to watch it because of Luke Wilson, because Luke Wilson is in Bottle Rocket, and Luke I Wilson's love Bottle Rocket. That fucking guy. He's, he's the man. And the concept of vacancy seemed really cool. And then I watched it. And that changed. Uh, I don't know. I just thought it was... uh, They just didn't really do much with the concept. Yeah. I just thought it was kind of like... Boring. Yeah. It's okay. Like, it's an okay movie. Yeah. But... I didn't, like, hate watching it. But it definitely wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Yeah. It is It is kind of a neat movie, but I don't think, like, I think I wound up taking that off and putting Creep on my list. Cause I like the one location aspect. Yeah. I'm big on one location movies. Yeah. I replace it with Creep because I would be more excited to show it's the, people Creep. It's the correct answer. You got it. Uh, got a couple honorable mentions. First one's Freddy vs. Jason. Hell yeah. Now that's a good time. That is a fucking blast. Yeah. That's probably the funnest movie we've talked about. Yeah, it's just straight <clears throat> fun. Like, if you're having some friends over, you are going to have some drinks, just throw on Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. You're going to have a good time. It's hysterical. Especially the part where they go over a bump and then Jason flies out of the van. <laughs> That's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk too long about Freddy vs. Jason, but... Uh, imagine... It's fun. Imagine Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees in the WWE. That's pretty much... Like a WWE-level storyline. Yeah. That's it. It's pretty much what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, we need more movies like that. Yeah. Like, bring back the V movies. Like Alien vs. Predator and Freddy vs. Jason. I dig start, Alien vs. Predator. Start People having more franchises movie. connect. Like, yeah. give us a fucking um, Barbarian vs. Gabriel movie. Hell yeah. Give me that shit. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there day one. Just start being silly. Yeah. Um,. The American Psycho I put on here because some people consider it a horror movie. Uh, it's a thousand percent a comedy, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred percent a comedy. A couple reasons it's not on there. One, people, most people really like it. Most people would know that it's a great movie. Um, second, I don't think it's a horror movie. I think it's a dark comedy. Um, and. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily underrated. I think people kind of consider it a classic at this point. But it's one of my favorite movies ever. So I wanted to throw it out there. Um, The Haunting of Hill House, I have. And it's an honorable mention because it's a limited series and it just didn't seem like it counted. Yeah. Um, but And also not super underrated because everyone who has seen it loves it. Yeah. It's pretty unanimously agreed it's an amazing show yeah, the flan man is a animal he needs to be stopped he's he's <laughs> someone really does need to shut him down dude yeah, he's dude, going he's, way too crazy. and apparently uh his new show is like his best dude. the one that hasn't came out yet how about you fucking how about you stop how about you shrink your penis about two inches uh mike <laughs> yeah. because how about you come down to reality dude. you you're leaving us in the dust you can't be right? a fucking cool guy making cool shows and have cool a massive things, penis and then just be fucking loaded below the belt yeah you gotta, it's not fair get out of here you gotta choose all unless right? you hit the road yeah fuck you Mike <laughs> yeah. um but yeah Haunting of Hill House some of the most 
like subtle scares. Uh, just a lot of stuff in the background, a lot of stuff you might not notice, but that's my shit. I, I love when horror movies can make you creeped out and scared without jump scares. Yeah. And Mike's not a big jump scare guy. It's no. not, that's not his bread and butter. That's, he lets that's for chumps. speak for itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it also just has an amazing story. Yeah. One of the best stories in horror probably I've ever seen. I agree with that. It, it doesn't, I mean, it certainly helps that it's a mini series. You get like 10 hours or eight hours of content versus like two or three. Yeah. That certainly helps flesh it out, but the story's just crazy. It's based on a book. It's not like he, you know, created the story himself, but I don't think that that's a good criticism because people say, uh, like, David Fincher isn't as good of a filmmaker as, like, Tarantino because Tarantino writes his own movies and Fincher does mostly adaptations. It's like, when you're a, a director, like, people forget that movie directors typically just direct they uh, they are handed a script and then the studio says hey direct this like yeah. steven spielberg i don't know if he's ever written a movie before other than like the fablemans he just has these these stories come to him and they say hey we want to make a indiana jones movie and then he directs it yeah so you you know that's your job is to direct it and david fincher knows what to adapt yeah. he knows what would make a good movie and what wouldn't that's a that's a skill well, well, other than you know, yeah, <laughs> other than he who will not be named. <laughs> let's take it. Let's take it easy. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't think it's a negative that you just do adaptations. I, I think it is somewhat of a plus if you're doing your own shit. Like it's impressive, without yeah. a doubt. It's impressive. Like Quentin Tarantino is a good director. He's a good writer, and you know, that's that's big, but. At the end of the day, you're talking about who's the better director, not who's the yeah. better director writer. If you're talking about who's the better director, it doesn't matter if they write or not. They're, yeah. You're talking about directing. Exactly. Tarantino has an interview where he said that he thinks that you can't compare a director to a writer director. He says that they're just completely different things. Yeah. Like, you can compare him to, like, Billy Wilder, another writer director, but he's like, I think he actually said, like, you can't really compare me and David Fincher because I'm a writer-director and he's just a director and, like, he's one of the best directors ever. But those are two different things. And it's like, I kind of get what he's saying, but... Yeah, I get it too because, like, Tarantino, since he's coming up with this shit, can do whatever he wants. It can look however he wants because it's his story. But, yeah. like... David Fincher has to say, no, he's got to get into the mind of someone else's characters and understand someone else's story to a level that he's like, no, that wouldn't make sense. Get yeah. that out of here. Yeah. It has to do this. You have to do this. We I mean, it's certainly this. more impressive. Um, like, it'd be much harder for me to make a, a great classic movie that I had to write my own, like, from scratch, than just reading a good book and saying, this would make a good movie, and then turning it into a movie. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly a different thing, and I get that, but... but there yeah. is that struggle that, like, you could interpret characters differently than other people, and then other people would be like, well, that's a bad interpretation of yeah, the story. Yeah, like but Stanley like if you, Kubrick with Jack Torrance. Yeah, but if you create your own characters, those guys can go fuck themselves, because you made them. Yeah. No limitations. Yeah. But yeah, Hunting of Hill House, fucking great. Go, go check it out. It's on Hell Netflix. Yeah. That'll give you um, some, some spookies. Another honorable mention, I've got It Follows, and it's not on here because it's not underrated. It's pretty properly rated. People fucking love It Follows, yeah. like they should. I thought about that movie too, but I feel like a lot of people know about it, talk about it. Yeah, it's got a 3.5. Um, it's got a cool, like almost an 80s feel it's got a synth synth soundtrack yeah makes it feel like a john carpenter movie very creative story um and also a like an interesting way to do the story because it doesn't re it's a monster movie basically but it requires no cgi because it's sort of like the thing where um 
there's like an, an entity taking over people. So when you're filming it, it's just like a person. Yeah. And this person comes towards you like this old lady comes towards you. And when you see that, you're like, oh, that's fucking creepy. That's that's it. That's the thing that's following me. Yeah. That's it that follows. Yeah. Um, but all it took for them to film that was getting an old lady to walk towards the camera. Yeah. Like it didn't require any CGI. It didn't require any practical effects. So it's a very simple idea that's just done really well. Yeah. And I'd like to rewatch it. I think it's... I think it's really fucking cool. I'd like to rewatch it too. I don't think I appreciate it as much as um I should. Yeah. Um it's my other honorable. And my other honorable is Spree. <clears throat> I thought about Spree too, but I didn't know um I'm not sure what genre where it, is. it kind of lands. It's a, like dark comedy. Yeah, it's kind of like a satire, thriller, horror like mashup thing. Yeah, but that's really fun. If you like American Psycho, watch Spree. Yeah, I Spree feel like is... it has a similar comedy style. Yeah, I like recommending Spree to people. I would kind of want to rewatch Spree. I'm um, down, dude. It's a gr- it's fun. It's fantastic. <laughs> Hashtag the lesson. <laughs> yeah. This isn't. This isn't. You said you were taking me home. This this isn't the way to my house. Oh no, not your house. My house. <laughs> and he just says it so nonchalant yeah uh yeah check out spree joe keery what is it that, that guy says that like makes him uncomfortable and he's like you know white men like you and me and he just goes oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah he goes oh and then like turns <laughs> off his nash cam <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what do you mean guys like us you know white guys he goes Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he just shuts down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Spree's really funny. Yeah, so check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, I think that's all we got. Yeah, perhaps. I think that's it for all the spookies. Uh, I think next week we're gonna do not underrated. We're gonna do just flat out top 10 horror movies of all time mm, okay we can do that that should be i mean it's going to be difficult but there's less like is it underrated is it not and it's kind of just like your opinion like yeah. i think like it's i think opinion. this is good so fuck you that's kind of all you have to say yeah um are we just gonna do like i kind of like just having just 10 bangers yeah not like this one's number one. Oh, i'm no i'm gonna rank them oh, okay yeah i'll see if i can get mine in a good working order yeah for that specific list i don't think it would be as entertaining if if it wasn't ranked so we'll do that and then i think after that episode we'll try to do our malignant breakdown heck yeah that should be fun i like it yep but thanks for tuning in to the spooky scoop. The, the spooky scoop. scoop. The hash slinging. The, the dash the slinging. Trash singing. The, the dash ringing. The, the hash slinging slasher. Nosferatu. Spooky scoop. <laughs>